Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorced mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Are you in an amicable divorce where everything's going swimmingly? Well, this episode is for you because we're going to identify when amicable can go wrong, how to identify it, and what you can do about it, and hopefully avoid some troubles. Yes. Hello, Mum. <laughs> Hello, Laura. It's lovely to have you here. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. So, Mum, I guess you don't see that many amicable divorce people walking through your door, but can you give an example of what an amicable divorce might look like? Okay, Uh, so I would say an amicable divorce is where people have a a, a sensible discussion Mm -hmm. about the separation and where perhaps both people are hurt but no one is angry about the separation and then uh, they are able to uh, take advice, legal advice, and settle their property, um, probably by consent orders or a financial agreement, but without having to argue it through lawyers, at mediation or through court. Mm. And same with children, I guess, arranging parenting yes, orders and things. that's right. And, yeah. and they're the ones that you don't usually see, like a true amicable. Is... Truly, truly amicable, hardly ever, only if I'm doing an agreement for them mm. and drafting up what they've agreed to mm. um, or a consent order. So, but yes, that, that Lately, or mostly, it's people who have got at least one issue where they're not able to agree. So we've always used the amicable personality type in everything we've done in our divorce Mm. course online, the DIY Divorce Blueprint, plus with our podcast episodes, we always touch on at the end, amicable, avoidant, high conflict and manipulative and controlling. And recently you were a bit worried that some people might think they're amicable, but they might not be, or they might come a cropper a little bit later. Yeah. And there are times where people are amicable and then it all goes wrong. Yes. So, and you've said before in some of our webinars as well, that amicable can be uh, like dressed as a wolf in <laughs> I, sheep's clothing. I, that's exactly right. It, yes. it could be something else dressed up as amicable. And I think that's what I was talking to you about, Laura, when yep. we had that chat. I'm worried that um, people will just take amicable at face value. Mm. In this episode, we're going to touch on the different types of amicable and what they can turn into Mm. and signs that you can look out for yourself. And a lot of your clients that have come to you in the past, mum, maybe they thought it was amicable and then it became Most of them. Yes. Most of them. Yeah. Um, I have to say it seemed to be all right at the start and then it's deteriorated. Okay. In the areas of financial children and legal Hmm. what's the main red flag that perhaps it isn't amicable when it comes to legal that magic word where they say (laughs) the one that says you don't need to see a lawyer yes yes yeah let's not use lawyers we'll do this ourselves what I find um, that probably half the time that means at least Mm -hmm. is don't you go and see a lawyer I've seen a lawyer. It scared the heck out of me, so let's not go to lawyers. Now, to be fair, you could be amicable and say, let's not go do lawyers, let's just do this ourselves. Mm. Sure. But if you are amicable and they say, don't go see a lawyer, and you do go see a lawyer and they get angry at you afterwards, then it's not actually an amicable divorce, is it? I think that a a fair person um, would say, look, let's not involve lawyers because it's expensive. Yeah. Um, let's not involve lawyers beyond the first bit of advice. So yeah. I think that you could easily decide not to get lawyers involved. And I think most people mean don't get lawyers involved in negotiating this. We can do it ourselves. But you have to know where you stand. You have to know what you're entitled yes. to. Yes. And, and so if someone's telling you you can't go and do that, yeah, uh, then that's not amicable. It's not It's not even Mm. because you know you guys even though you've been together probably years Mm -hmm. and and you've you've worked together as a couple you it's really takes a while to really realize that it's each of you for yourself afterwards sometimes it's really hard to to come to that realization and sometimes you need to talk to a third person to say no 
her interests mm. aren't your interests anymore. Mm. You know, you both have a different point of view in this proceedings. Yeah, mm. and we're not saying, oh, go and start fighting and everyone should get Absolutely lawyers. Absolutely But what not. we're saying is that just because they say don't go see a lawyer, mm. let's do this ourselves, doesn't mean you shouldn't because it's your future that you've got to live with yeah. and you will kick yourself in the future if you find out you're, you know, struggling yeah. for money when you could have been entitled to a little bit more. Well, I, I think amicable really means to me business-like. Yes. You know? Yeah. And if you were doing a business deal with someone, no matter how much you liked them and respected them, mm -hmm. you'd go and get your own legal advice. Yeah. So I think that's a good analogy mm -hmm. to remember, that amicable in, in the way I think of it is more like a business deal. Okay. Now I've heard uh, in the financial realm of amicable going wrong. And I've heard some quite horrible stories where they, someone's told me and I think, oh, that's not amicable, that's controlling. Yes. So what are some examples of that where people might think they're in an amicable separation but, in fact, they're in a manipulative and controlling one? Well, again, top of the pops is don't go and see a lawyer. Yes. Or I've got a lawyer and he's got a friend or she's got a friend that you can use. Or um, when you go... Um, Take my my auntie, or you know, you know, you get on well with my niece. Take them with you. Mm. Um, I don't. I think that would worry me. Mm. Um, it, it's more manipulative and controlling. And also, if you are not able, in your heart of hearts, if you know you shouldn't raise certain points, um, or that person will get angry, then the amicable mask slips away. So you'll often see people come in, and they'll say. Oh, we've reached agreement, but I've promised her I won't touch her super mm. or or I've promised her I won't ask for a share of the house or I've promised him um, that he can keep the cars out of the property pool. Any of those things where they have elicited a promise from you under um, a kind of guise of being amicable, I think is manipulative and controlling. Mm. And if you're in a situation where they're, they're the ones, you, maybe you sold the house together amicably, mm. that's been done, the money's gone into a bank account and you trust that they're going to look after the money mm -hmm. and they give you a little bit, mm -hmm. that's controlling. Oh, that's a controlling red flag. And they yeah. keep you on a, on a string. Sorry, Laura. That's but, right. But the, it's, I call it good girl, bad girl or mm. good boy, bad boy. If you do the right thing this week, here's your money. If you don't do the right thing, you're mm. not getting it. And I see that in child support as well when, when the agency's not collecting. Mm. So you don't want to give your power away to another person and a true amicable business-like arrangement you wouldn't dream of giving the other person all of that control no so if you don't have control over your money mm. whether it was earned by them or not if you mm. don't have any control over any of the money and you're uh hanging on them to send oh i'm run out of money this week can you give me a bit more because mm. you haven't had your property settlement or you haven't mm. seen a lawyer and they just give you a little bit of money and a little bit of money that's not no amicable that is a bit controlling, controlling. and so and another one that crops up often is i'll get you a house to rent and i'll buy you some furniture you know, or I'll come with you to buy the furniture, or you can't spend more than this on the. So what you you need to say is no. This is my life I'm building. Um, the trouble with this amicable arrangement, where the money is doled out inch at a time, is that people, if they search their hearts, they know if they started court proceedings, the amicable goes out the window, and they're not going to get any money until they get to court and get an order for the money. And mm. I've seen that a million times, where yeah. that that drip feeding things stops as soon as you start to stand up for yourself but look the court has process processes for that mm. so you can go to court for a spousal maintenance claim and uh, they have an interim spousal maintenance claim a process where you don't really have cross-examination the court will just make the order right um, um usually and and then sort it out later on just so you're not completely broke yeah and you can see a legal aid if you can't afford a lawyer at the time absolutely or you can go if if you're you know you know you've got a I don't know a 10 million dollar house and yeah. all this money that you know somewhere you can go and see a lawyer and and say can you please get this money for me and then I can pay yeah. you and a lot of people uh, I we heard uh, the other day at a, a domestic violence fundraiser uh, didn't we that a lot of people 
um, are asking the workers at um, the domestic violence places mm. to help them do the documents for court. Mm. So we are, if, if you are in touch with the domestic violence uh, agency and they don't have our course, mm-hmm. um, let them know they can have yeah. the course. You can email us at the divorce course <laughs> podcast at gmail.com. All right, let's go back to uh, credit cards, mum. I've, I know somebody else who said, I've, I've got an amicable uh, divorce. I've got a credit card that he lets me use. He lets me use. Yes. Now, I, I, so that's those, not amicable either, no, is I it? No, I don't like the word lets me or I'm not allowed. But think about this to, to its nth degree. Pretty well everyone these days has immediate access to their online to their accounts online and their cards. So let's say you've got the card that the other person lets you use and you've gone and got a coffee uh, somewhere and then you've uh, gone and had a pedicure and then maybe you've gone out to dinner with someone. In real time, the other person pretty well knows what, what you are doing. doing and where you're going, especially in these days of pretty well contactless. Mm. So you are again, giving away your privacy privacy and your independence, which you would never do no. to a mere business partner. So it is getting over into the creepy realm mm. Mm. of control. And, and look, you, that's not to say that some people aren't just doing that out of the kindness of their mm-hmm. heart, but it's a pretty big red flag if they say, I saw you went Nate here the other yeah. day. Why did you do that? So that is not amicable. No, that is controlling. It is. And why not ask them this if, they, if they've given you a card to use? Ask them, again asking, but this is early stages where they were, can you have a certain amount in your account um, that you've set up, remember, at a different bank, Mm -hmm. no matter how amicable you are, um, and that you can use for your day-to-day living until property settlement. Mm -hmm. If if you have to ask them for it, that's a red flag. If they don't give it to you, that's a double red flag about their motives. So if you think you're in an amicable relationship right now, if you go and ask your ex for an out, a bit of the money from the property settlement to be put into your individual bank account. If you're too scared to ask, that's a red flag that you might be in a controlling mm-hmm. relationship. If you do ask and they say no, that's a proof that it's not amicable. So you need to really ask yourself these questions. Mm-hmm. And would I really ask my ex-partner and would they say yes? Am I brave enough to? Yes. yes. And that's or the same will that with, upset everything? And that's the same with I'm, I'm going to go and see a lawyer. Would it then not become amicable? Would they then get angry at you? Because that's also not. Yes, and it's also a red flag. The, when it comes to children, so mm. it's an amicable separation, and I have seen this the reverse way with women and men. Of course. Where, you know, the... It's amicable, the separation's happened, the mother has the children, kind of decides when or not the Mm -hmm. father can see the child, and that's kind of a, you think it's amicable, but if the father said, hey, can I take little Johnny for the weekend, I want to go to see Aunt May, that might show a sign of... Of, of controlling and manipulating. Yes, and if you feel like you're walking the tightrope yep. tight of not being able to ask for more than you're being given with time with children, yes. it might also not be amicable. And that's, yes, and being given the time is the, is the wrong, whole wrong paradigm. If yes. you feel like um, that she's only giving you the time at her thing, that that's controlling and, right. and it's not a, a fair arrangement at yes. all. Yeah. yeah, and we're, like, we're really just trying to point out, we're not trying to make everyone become into a battleground. No, I, I wish it's you just, all a good business-like amicable arrangement, yes. all of you. Yes, <laughs> it's just mum is very concerned, and I am too, that some people out there don't realise until it is too late or mm-hmm. after the fact mm. that they really should have uh, seen their relationship for what it was mm. and perhaps it wasn't amicable, it was you just not rocking the boat. Mm. When it comes to kids particularly, if it drags on a long time, uh, then that becomes kind of the normal for the children and mm. it'll be very hard to change an arrangement if you've only been getting weekends or if you only get it as hog. It's going to be very hard um, to change the arrangement if it's been going for a year or two. And why is that? Well, because the court does look at what the children are used to. Right. You know, and, and there might be uh, the person who hasn't been letting you have the children might say, oh, the reason I didn't is this person had problems. They had 
drugs or mental health or whatever, you know. So you really with children need to start as you mean to go on. Mm. Um, there's no real, I mean, real amicable mm. would give you a reasonable time with the children and probably like almost 50-50. Yeah. But fake amicable, I was just talking to someone, a, psychi- a psychologist just then, fake amicable can do a lot of harm to children because okay. they're not silly. They know who's calling the shots mm. and it doesn't feel fair to them. And, of course, we're not talking about baggage here. These are kids who are not seeing you enough, mm. you know, if you're just being dolled out. And maybe the person's doing it to the children, like, oh, I'll let, I'll see if I'll let you go to your father's or your mother's next weekend. Let's see what's happening and leave them hanging. The kids mm. don't have that certainty. Do you know the biggest red flag what? Um, with kids yeah. is if you get a new partner mm. and suddenly – Everything changes. Not amicable anymore. Not amicable anymore. And that might be that they were holding on to a hope of the marriage getting back or the relationship getting back together. So you've got to be careful. It's not just that really nice because they hope that it's not going to happen. Mm. The separation isn't real. It's only trial. And then their true colours come out. So I guess some people, some maybe some exes can pretend and make it feel amicable, make you feel like that it is amicable because they want to control the finances or they want to control you or they want to control the kids or some of them want to get you back. Yeah. Um, But when they realise they can't get you back, then Mm. all hell breaks loose. And the other one, Mum, that we've noticed is amicable can sometimes be avoidant. Yes. In wolf's clothing, so in sheep's clothing. (laughs) So what what indicators to someone who has an amicable divorce right now could tell that it is actually an avoidant one? Well, I guess in a nutshell it's that everything is just fine, just hunky-dory, as long as no one mentions the divorce or as long as no one says, you know, maybe it's time you moved out of the house and we we got it sold, Mm. (laughs) you know. Mm. Um, So that kind of – and then they clam up. Do you know? Mm. And that avoidant in itself, um, that's not amicable. No. Uh, you may feel guilty. Sometimes the person who's left the marriage is being made to feel guilty, um, particularly if the other person is presenting as amicable. Mm. You think, I'm such an awful person to do this to him or her um, and I, I'm not going to, I feel so guilty, I'm not going to upset the boat. Um, but then as time goes by and, as I said, you begin to think, okay, I've got my path to tread that's separate from this other person's path, then um, then you might realise, actually, if I do mention it, mm. it's probably going to send him off or mm. her off. Or if I try and slide the divorce papers over. Yes. Or yes. if I it's ask, can time. we sell the house soon? Yes. We've had a, lot, a few listeners have big issues with se- separating under one roof with their, ex, with mm. their partner but being too afraid to ask to sell the house or asking to sell the house and then just avoiding the issue, the yes. other person. What can people do in that instance? It's hard because the, the rental market's so hard at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I think that a lot of people live in separate parts of the houses. You may need to be very clear and put a, send a letter or mm-hmm. email to them and, and gauge the response. Now, you can consult your own mind if I, I'll write this letter and let's see what they do. Mm. And if they um, continue to ignore it, then you may have to ramp it up a bit, go and see a lawyer, get a lawyer's letter and, and what begin. Would, what would a lawyer do to get an avoidant ex selling well, the house or out of the house? Well, it's amazing actually what the receipt of a, a letter from a lawyer, it, it does have a pretty galvanising effect on people. Yeah. Um, so just the letter mm-hmm. might be enough. So the letters, I hate writing them, but... Um, these letters say, you know, dear such and such, uh, we act for your other person, other partner, um, who instructs that the relationship is over or the marriage has ended and there's no prospects of getting back together again and it's now time to resolve property matters amicably and as a first step, since neither of you can afford to keep the house, um, our client proposes it be sold, let, and let us know. And there's usually mention of mediators and so forth in that letter. So that usually sends a person who is avoidant usually if it if they're amicable and then become avoidant mm-hmm. it'll usually send them off to their own lawyer and then at a kind of brings it all up to the surface yeah if they still ignore then we have to go into our avoidant tactics of Mm. course which we've talked about how you deal with the person who's completely avoidant yes. Uh, but yes it, it's sometimes the avoidance is 
they are amicable. They're avoiding because of grief. Um, but that letter should spur them on. And if you would like to hear more about that Who Moves Out, mm. um, we've done an episode on that in the first second or third podcast number two or three yes. it's not the greatest quality but it has <laughs> sound the, quality has the good information yeah. in it that you will need that a lot of people have listened to on who moves out yeah. and that might help you in that situation but we have a lot of listeners stuck in that situation it's horrible. if you are in an if in a relationship under one roof with someone who you know you are too afraid to ask to sell the house you know if you can possibly get yourself somewhere safe this mm. is general advice only yes. but probably best not be living in the same house at the time at the, the time the, they the get pro- the letter that's yeah. right and and the there can are proceedings and we've talked about this in our podcast where you can get sole occupancy of a house there's a case called feeling confused, lost, scared and overwhelmed by the family law legal jargon and processes? Join the club. Now it's your chance to empower, educate and equip yourself with the legal know-how and tools you need to get divorced and finally settle. Introducing the DIY Divorce Blueprint created lovingly by Mum and Me. We've downloaded Mum's Brains into 42 video lessons along with over 100 templates and worksheets that you can use to create and settle your property and children's matters. Follow our guide and steps and templates to get yourself finally settled in divorce. Use it as a guide with your lawyer or without. But hopefully using this down wide divorce blueprint, you can stay out of court and you can get it settled and sorted at a fraction of the price. Click the link in the show notes to find out more or go to thedivorcecourse.com.au backslash enroll. See you then. Separated parties for the court to expect separated parties to remain in a house. But if you do bring such an application, you're really rolling the dice. The court might decide it's the other person who should have the house, not you. Mm. Um, so that's you know, but yeah. it's so it's all easy to say when there's nowhere to rent. No, mm. Mum, I think, and it's it's a bit of a I know it's a little bit of a wishy washy non legal topic, but it is a good question to ask. What are some things that the listeners today can ask themselves driving along or cleaning yep. the house yep. i'm in an amicable divorce i just need to know what to do yes and i just need to know how to do it and yes. now they're listening to this and what questions do you want them to ask what's an to ask themselves ask themselves yeah, yeah. so um ask yourself is there anything about the separation that you could can't mention that you just know that if you mention it the whole thing's going to go haywire that's one thing. Um, the second thing to ask yourself is um, have you agreed to something out of guilt? Mm. Is the other person being amicable um, because they want to get back together again? And you can usually tell. Mm. Um, if that's the case, then you don't yet know what sort of divorce you're going to have. Mm. You can also ask yourself, am I afraid to rock the boat? Yes. So they might say, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do this on this day. We're going to sell the house mm-hmm. on this day. I'm going to put the money from the house in mm-hmm. this bank account that I own mm-hmm. and we're, and then I'm going to give you a, a, a payout based on what I think you owe. Mm. If you're too afraid, like you go, oh, great, he's giving me half the money from the house. Mm. But you don't know when, you don't know how, and you're too afraid to ask where the money is or mm-hmm. you're too afraid to ask when you'll get mm-hmm. the money. It's not amicable. No, well, that's right. And you should say, instead of, you should say, now, if I were in a business with someone and we sold the property, would I let them have all of that power? And indeed, would they expect me Mm. to be beholden to them? Mm. So I think that's a very important question to ask. Now, it's important to to emphasise, though, sometimes we get, you know, in family law cases, Sometimes the other side is just that sort of person, like they're they're um, manipulative and controlling or whatever. Um, I don't care what direction they're coming from. If they say, "Oh, you're wrong about this, and you're right about this, and she didn't do this, and he didn't do that," um, I don't care. I just look at the number at the bottom. What is the proposal they're giving? Mm-hmm. And then I look at it through my lens of what is fair, and if it's pretty close then you might just let it through, you know, and that would be a commercial decision that you're making. Mm. It might be a decision you've made throughout the marriage to, you know, if you've got someone manipulative and controlling, you know how not to rock the boat. You've got to decide if it's 
if what he what is offered and the timeframes that are offered um, are they good enough for you? Get your legal advice. Ask a friend. Yeah, ask I think, a friend. Ask a lawyer. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and then, and you then can ask make, yourself. And then ask yourself those. Yeah. So ask a friend. Am I in a in a, not an amicable? Yeah. Is, Am is, I crazy to is, do this? Is, is, like, tell them what situation you're in. Tell them how you know what's going mm. on with it. How's it all being managed? And look at their face for reaction. Mm-hmm. And if they look a bit shocked or they're a bit like, oh, I don't think that sounds good. Maybe listen to them. Yes. Um, then ask yourself. You know. Am I worried I'm going to rock the boat? Yeah. Am I too afraid to say, hey, I'd like to do it this way or ask for something different than what they're offering? That's probably a red flag. Yeah. And then seek legal advice. Ask a lawyer, what am I actually entitled to? Yeah. And if that act alone creates drama, then it's not amicable And either. it shouldn't create drama. Yeah. If you've got a relationship and you don't want to rock that boat, um, you think it's amicable, there's no he, there's no way he's going to know you've been to see a lawyer except if, if you're using card. his credit card. Yes. <laughs> but mum, you said when we were talking about this, yeah. Once you've seen all of that, once you know what you're entitled to, yeah. Once you know what kind of relationship you're actually in, yes. you can make that decision on what you want to ask for with your eyes wide open. That's right. That's and, it. And you can make the decision to take it. Yeah, or you can make a decision to leave it. Um, as long that's as your you choice. know, that's right. As long as you know what it is uh, that you're dealing with, and that you're not just doing it out of guilt mm. or out of um, a desire not to upset the kids or a desire not to upset your ex. Mm. Yeah, because in the long run, what you feel now, as opposed to what you may feel in two years, mm-hmm. could be completely different. Mm. And then. Obviously, whatever you're feeling in two years is just going to get better and bigger the longer you live your life. And that one small window that a lot of people, after they leave their partners, where they either feeling guilty for leaving them or they're being controlled and manipulated, you're not in a good place to make an educated decision. So you need to make sure you know, okay, I'm in this type of relationship I've seen a lawyer. The lawyer says I'm entitled to this. Can you make an informed, educated decision that you can live with? Well, I think the way to think of it is can you make a commercial decision? So you have regard to the length of time it might take to get to court, the cost Mm -hmm. and the drama of Mm -hmm. going to court. Um, Of course, if what is being proposed is so small, it's it's just not sensible or so off base um, in terms of the children that it's nowhere near what you're entitled to, then I think you should think long and hard before you accept it. Mm. But if it's close to what you what you thought was reasonable, what your lawyer thought, what your friend thinks is about right, you know, and, and if you add in the costs and the delays, you, if it's, you can make a commercial decision to live with it, that's fine and they can have the fantasy of, of being amicable all the way through, even if you do know underneath. Well, that's right. I was going to ask. (laughs) So if you figure out halfway through, wait, I'm being financially controlled or I'm being controlled or being led along by a Mm -hmm. lead, basically, Mm -hmm. dealt out little bits of crumbs, um, which I've always gratefully accepted, but now I'm thinking maybe I should be this way. Ask for the whole cake or half a cake. (laughs) Do you let on to that that you know or do you just keep that to yourself? Again, I'd keep it to myself until I've seen a lawyer, talked to my friend, consulted myself, make sure I'm not running out of guilt, operating from guilt. Have a look at what the proposal is long term and if it's something that the court might have ordered anyway, Mm -hmm. you can let your ex continue to have their illusion. But I'd be very careful about anything that keeps you sort of still stuck together Mm. financially. I think you need, like if you went to court, Section 81 of the Family Law Act says that the court has a duty to sever the financial relationship between parties. Mm. So sometimes people are amicable because they're both running a business still. Yeah. Yes, but, you know, you need to get that business on a proper commercial footing as though you were not partners in in the previous life as long as you weren't as though though you weren't married or de facto yeah okay and and when it comes to children Mm -hmm. do you just do the same thing you make sure that the children's arrangements are suitable for the children. Okay. Talk to your lawyer, talk to, you know, see what's usual. And if they want Wednesdays and you want Mondays um, and you're not going to be able to ask them for Mondays without upsetting everything else, well, then try and put up with Wednesday. Mm. So that's where you kind of cut your losses and say, okay, for the peace, um, I'm going to agree with that point. But, you know, they... It's, 
sometimes amicable people, they, they, they say to you, oh, I've seen a lawyer and this is all you're going to get, or I've seen a lawyer and this is what normally happens with kids. Just go and get your own advice. Anyway. Yeah, advice. Yeah. 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 Anyway. And I think that's the, the strongest message that we've got mm. here today is because we've just touched on amicable the whole way through, mediation, mm. everything you can think of. We've always talked about it, but when it comes down to it, you've just got to get your own legal advice. No matter what sort of separation you've got, yeah. it's just good business sense. Yes. And when it comes to being amicable, if you're coming up with consent orders for parenting orders, mm. for parenting arrangement, if, I feel like maybe they should consider having it still clear and not leading, leaving anything to ambiguity, like uh, otherwise so in too. case it does change yeah. to a controlling later. Yeah. Well, like, well, like say one of you gets a new partner hmm. and uh, perhaps your ex's new partner wants to, you know, um, call point, score points against you, suddenly it all falls apart and then you're stuck with whatever this order says. Mm. So I agree with you. I, I think it needs to be set out clearly. Mm. With property, the court, of course, won't make an order that's not fair and uh, not just and equitable mm. between you both. Uh, so another little red flag is if Mr. or Mrs. Amicable suggests a financial agreement mm. because that doesn't get the scrutiny of the court. And so you could sign something that's terrible for you um, in a financial agreement and, and potentially be stuck with it. Okay, so if you have got an ex and you feel maybe you're amicable and they say, I've got a financial agreement, I've paid for it all, I've done it myself, mm. all we have to do is sign, we don't have to worry about lawyers mm -hmm. and we can move on with our lives, what do you say to the listeners who are at that Point. Okay, if you are at that point, you must have a lawyer for that agreement to be binding. The court has said that you must have your own lawyer who gives you letters of advice and a certificate. Where that's been a problem is has been where the um, other person controls what lawyer you go to or who goes with you to the lawyer uh. um, to make sure you, don't, you hold the line because if they're really manipulative and controlling, not amicable, they don't want you... Uh, falling out of the agreement when someone talks to you. So they'll try to make sure you don't get any free and independent or independent advice. So what they might send you to a friend's lawyer yep. or a lawyer that's, you know. Who's not very good okay. or not very diligent maybe. And or just they might send a family it. member with you yep. to make sure yep. that you don't ask questions. That, yep. Oh, that's horrible. But so if, so if there's a financial agreement that's been pressed on a listener today, mm. oh, isn't my ex wonderful? He sorted it all out. Mm. We don't have to go to court. I'm not quite sure how much money's in the property pool. Uh, his business is his own. I don't actually didn't make any of the money. I so promised it's not I fair. won't touch his business. Yeah. So just remember and go and listen to our property settlement and mm. part three series. Mm -hmm. You are entitled whether you made it or not, especially if you've been a long, long marriage. Even if you are guilty of, if, if you feel like your, your affair or whatever it was broke the marriage up. Yeah, the you're entitled to half. The court doesn't look at that. Well, yeah. well half Roughly. or whatever, yeah. yeah, whatever the proper percentage is. But what you're definitely entitled to is independent advice mm. from a decent lawyer, um, not chosen by your ex, who can tell you the truth Okay, so what it is. So decent lawyers, not chosen by exes, what if they can't afford it? Legal aid? Um, no, le no. If you can't afford a, a, a lawyer and you're having a financial agreement, I'd have to wonder why you're using a financial agreement because it, if it's a small pool, consent orders will be sufficient and yeah. you don't need a lawyer. If it's a big pool and there's a financial agreement, why haven't you got money to pay for your lawyer for financial agreement. Mm. Don't let your ex pay for your lawyer or choose your lawyer. So with consent agreements and not financial agreements, consent mm. agreements. Consent orders. Consent orders. What happens if you sign a consent orders that doesn't include a large part of property you didn't know they owned? Uh, well, because the application for consent orders has a detailed financial history, yes. if you find something that isn't included on that history, you can go back to the court and change the or get the court to change the orders oh, and say, Your Honours, you couldn't have known what was just and equitable because this person did not disclose all of these other assets, which I've since found out they have. Now, we've had a, quite a few questions about that on TikTok mm. and Instagram. <laughs> so, like a couple of listeners or watchers have found out of properties that yes. they didn't know existed. Wow. And they were wondering what the timeline was. 
Is but there a- if you find out, then bring it. Then they're not going to be allowed to benefit. Yes, from that error. So you've had your property settlement. So yeah. the timeline from divorce or from de facto doesn't usually count. Yeah, um, unless you've done it with a financial agreement. But the court can grant an extension. If there's a reason, a okay. good reason, and the good reason is this. I thought it was all done and dusted, and then I find out all along he had this property. Mm. Um, anyone who's listening, I get to lawyers, if you can, to check um, and have a check on the land registers. Well, listen to our DIY disclosure there episode, you go. Yeah. general advice only, but mum yeah. literally lists all the things <laughs> she uses to do the checks for her clients, and you can do a lot of them yourself. Absolutely. And we're you can all look smart. up where, yeah. what, what businesses smart, yeah. does my husband's ex-husband's name in. What, what, and that's a free search. Yeah, so you can look up all these, what properties, um, vehicles, you can look it all up. Yep, you can send out and find out their superannuation. And there's no harm in double-checking. Well, he doesn't have to know or she doesn't have to know. But there's no harm in double checking. No, you're not being sneaky. You're being you're being businesslike. Yeah. You Using wouldn't buy a business sense. or agree to buy a business if you didn't know what was part of it. That's right. If they there call was it, any debt owing. Yeah, they call it due diligence. Yes. Due diligence. And yeah. that's what you're doing. You're just making. And it's not just your future if you've got kids. Mm. You know, it's the children's future that's as well. That's right. And, and their ability to live and, and, and be in a safe environment and happy yeah. environment with education. And so so to the listeners out there that think they're amicable, really have a deep down, deep dig and reflect. And if you really, if you've been in a relationship for 25 years mm. or 15 years even, you might really not have, if it is controlling, you might not realise it. You don't so know what you don't know sometimes. You, but you might not have told anybody no. the things that maybe you're ashamed of or embarrassed about and maybe it's time to go and have a chat to someone about mm. those things. Well, sometimes it's not ashamed or embarrassed. Sometimes it just seems so normal to you yes. that you don't even realise. And it's not until you're talking to that trusted friend about these things that they'll go, hang on, wait, what did you just say? Mm, yes. You know. So you need to go and do some reality checking mm. um, because, yes, it's great if you're amicable and we hope that it's amicable. I do. But you don't want to be um, sucked in. You tricked. don't want to be tricked. You don't want to be tricked yeah. because this is your future moving forward. Mm. They're not going to be offering to pay for your car mm. uh, if it breaks down in two years and or you've the got to pay machine. the school fees, yeah. etc. They're not going to be there to help you. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you can stand on your own two feet. And if that means asking for a little bit more of the property pool or asking for any of the property pool, yep. then or you just got to do it. To it. It's, it's a kind of self-care. Mm. It's putting your needs equal to their needs Mm. and for many of us for many years particularly if there's been a controlling relationship um that's not that doesn't come easily yes and and i have heard the argument oh i don't want them to hate me i don't want to ruin the relationship that we still have i don't want them to think i'm money hungry but in reality they're going if they're going to hate you they're going to hate you anyway when you ask Mm -hmm. for even a little bit of the money Mm -hmm. let alone what you're properly entitled to and and if they do hate you for that then that tells you they are controlling you yes and it's Uh, not a relationship it's not a business like amicable separation no so uh if you're listening and you're you're starting to think "Mm, I don't want to rock the boat. I am too afraid to ask where that money's been kept or we're still just floating in the atmosphere and we've yeah, been we separated for two years yep. and we've done nothing. Yeah. You need to go listen to some of our other episodes on, you know, coercive control mm. and financial abuse and property settlement and, and hopefully have a little listen to some of those episodes and get yourself maybe aware of what you're entitled to and, and what you can do to move the, forward. The only way to get... Property settlement is to, to do it, to go through it. Yep. And uh, and at some point you can you can do it sooner or, or later. Yep. But it takes about the same length of time to get out and you might have been free by now if you hadn't been sort of worried about those things. So mm. just think about, yeah, like you say, yep. it, just and first don't let step, it drag on. First step you need to do, go and talk to a friend. Yes. Find out what your property pool is. Find mm. out what all the assets are. Go and see a lawyer. Just for their advice, for a one-off, yes. what am I entitled to? Uh, quietly. No quietly. one needs to know. Yep. And then you can make educated decisions with your eyes wide open. Mm. 
uh, on what, what you're going to accept for your future. And that's mm. all we hope for, that you have a great future and yes. you set yourself and up. and you get through this in one piece emotionally and financially. Yes. <laughs> yes. And preferably you can do it yourself. That's right. <laughs> now, thank you, Mum, so much for your time. And, okay, and I know, right. listeners, this one wasn't so much a, a legal one per se, mm. but it's an important one because if you are going out there right now and facing this yourself and you haven't spoken to anyone, Uh, but you're listening to this, this is your sign from the universe. Go talk (laughs) to someone. And, you know, 1-800-RESPECT is a great phone number you can call um, and listen to all our other podcast episodes on these topics. And mum has Apple or Spotify. Or- hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things she can tell you. <laughs> There's hours of it. Okay. Oh, all dear. right. Thank you everyone for listening and we will see you next week. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.